Hello and welcome to the Python Pub PL SQL part 2 of this video. I hope you enjoyed the part 1 of the series where you were introduced to the basics of Python language vis a vis the PL SQL language. In this video, we'll explore the slightly more advanced topics such as decision making and loops, which are very important for any programming language, as you might know. As in the case of uh, part 1 uh, video, you also have the ability to download a podcast to listen at your pleasure. Uh, do go through the quiz at the end of it and the quick summary to, so that we sum up or we can recap all the things we go through this uh, video today. So without uh, further ado, let me jump on to the first one, which is the basic of any language, the if condition. This is how an if condition looks like in PL SQL. If some conditional logic, as you can see here, for example, n1 is less than n2, a equal to b, and anything that actually could be in a conditional expression. There's a keyword called then, which identifies the end of the expression. Some bunch of statements come here, and that's the only statement get executed if this conditional expression is true. If it's not true, there could be an optional else um, uh, keyword here, and these statements get executed. And at the end of it, to mark the end of this if, you have end if with the semicolon. That's a typical PL SQL um, if block. Likewise, in Python, there is a if uh, clause as well, but um, also there's a else clause, but there is no then. You can see right here. Instead, there's a colon that shows you the end of the conditional expression. So it could be n1 equal to n2, n3 equal to uh, a equal to b, uh, or anything that comes in here, or it could have and as well. But the end of that conditional expression is marked by colon. Then a bunch of statements come here, and only these statements gets executed if this condition is true. There's a optional else as well, again with a colon at the end of it, which says the end of else, and then a bunch of statement comes here. The question you might ask is, okay, there is no end if in this. So in that case, how does Python know exactly at what point there is no more statements in the else block? Or if there is no else block, how does Python know there are no more statements in the if block? Well, this is important part of Python, which is different from PLSQL. There's an indentation right here. You can see this indentation uh, before the statements that tells you which particular block they belong to. So in this case, these two statements, because they're indented, they belong to the if block. Else is not part of that because else is different. It's not indented at all. It's like indented to the same level as if. And there's an indentation of this sum statement over here that comes into else. If anything comes here after this statement and this is not indented, then this is not part of the if block. So that's a big difference between PLSQL and Python. So let's see, without further ado, an actual example. In this case, I have two screens. The left one is the PLSQL screen. And just to mark it different, this is black on white. And the right one is the Python screen. And this is yellow on black, just to show the differences. In this, this is how it looks like. This is the first program. If n1 is less than n2, this is a typical PLSQL program, simply comparing two variables and if and, and displaying what the output of the variables are, 2 equal to 3, etc. As you can see here, it shows very clearly n1 equal to n2. The exact same program in Python I have written, and just to show you that program, I'm going to just open up in Notepad, as you can see here. I call the program p1.txt. By the way, just to recap from the previous video, you don't have to name your program with an extension py or anything specific. It can be anything. Um, Python doesn't really require a specific extension for itself. You may use it uh, just for the simplicity's sake, also all to identify the program, the scripts easily, but you don't need to. I use the txt in this case simply because it's a default in Notepad, and I can open up in Notepad very easily. That's the reason why. So this is a py.txt is a simple Python script. I have two variables, n1 and n2. As you might remember from the first one, n1 equal to 2 has uh, two purposes. First, it declares a variable called n1, and it assigns the value 2 to n1. And because 2 is an integer, n1 is implicitly defined as an integer. And from the life of, of this program, uh, this, uh, in, the, in the life of the script, n1 is an integer, unless we change it to something else uh, down the line. 
and then I have this if condition n1 less than n2 as you can see there's a semicolon uh, uh, sorry colon after this not semicolon right here colon after this that marks the end of it then I have a print statement and I have an indentation right before it that tells uh, Python that this is part of the if condition and that's the only one that is indented there's a else and if else is not indented with this as a result of that Python knows if this n1 is less than n2 this condition is satisfied it should execute only this statement and nothing more than that similarly here else this is also indented I can see that here and this is the only statement that gets executed just for the fun of it I deliberately put the last statement here as you can see this statement print is not indented it is indentation is the same level as if and else conditions and this is vital because this will simply make sure that this this statement because it's not indented it will execute every time so let's see how we execute the program so n1 is less than n2 well, let me just uh, open the program for you to see very clearly as well this is the program that looks like n1 is less than n1 equal to 2 and 2 equal to 3 and uh, 2 is less than 3 that's why the, the output of it is very simple output is really simple n1 is less than n2 makes sense but look at this one even though Python executed this statement only it also executed this statement print why because this is not part of the if condition at all so this executed anyway because of the indentation this is a very very important topic if we put indentation that means it has to be part of the else block if we don't it is not part of the else block this is vital in this case I want this this is another program to run to print regardless of what is the outcome in the if condition that's exactly why that's why I haven't put the indentation what if I make a mistake and I put the indentation let's see that actually that uh, how that works open up the file I don't do this I put an indentation right here let's see how that this program behaves now let's see it does not print the last line why is that it's very simple look at this the indentation of print is different it's actually indented with this statement so because n1 is less than n2 this expression is true Python is going to execute only this statement and ignore everything in the else block because this is indented with else block this is considered to be part of the else block and therefore will not execute this is a very important topic I want to stress because most PL SQL developers uh, make this mistake of this indentation because in PL SQL indentation is not required it's optional in fact PL SQL doesn't even require that you have different lines you can put everything in one line too um, but it's just there to make it readable in Python it's not just uh, optional or not just nice to have it's actually required for this reason so pay attention to the indentation levels very very to very well without that is you might have a problem um, generally this is I don't use the idle which is the interactive development environment of Python which I talked about earlier even one example this particular case is actually very very useful to use Python I'm sorry idle for this reason let's see how um, in this case I have defined this variable n1 uh, n2 uh, equal to 3 etc so when I do if n1 is less than n2 and to when I press enter my cursor automatically goes with indentation in place that's a very very useful thing say this and then when I press enter the cursor stays at that indentation level because I'm it assumes that I'm going to enter more and more commands at this point let's say I don't want to enter in commands I go to if block in that case I simply press a backspace and it goes back to the beginning of the line so I put else again the cursor goes back to the indented level automatically I don't have to do this print more and enter again the cursor goes back to the indented level let's say I don't want to enter any more else statement at this point I simply press backspace 
and I press enter. As you can see, it, it produced the, the output as correctly as I, want, I wanted. So this indentation is done automatically in idle. So that might be one of the useful things to do. But um, I generally use Notepad for the very simple reason that I can just open up Notepad anytime and keep on typing. I just have to keep in mind the indentation level is important in, in, in uh, PLSQL. So that's about uh, if condition and indentation level. Remember else if uh, statement in PLSQL? Else if is this, so let's see how that else if looks like. This is a else if condition. So if n1 is less than n2, uh, else if n1 is equal to n1 and n2 are equal, then print it and so on and so forth. You can see that this is very simple else if statement. The equivalent of else if in Python is elif. So this is how the elif looks like. Let's see. So let me just open up this uh, uh, to be in a notepad so that you can see it very well. This is how the elif looks like. If elif is this and then else. Again, remember colon is the demarcation of expressions or, or in if condition. So here colon colon and colon and again the indentation plays a role in defining which statements are part of the elif block so whatever i put here will come under the elif block and just likewise here as well so let's see how we run this program python p2 n1 is greater than n2 this is the end of the program once again just for to show you the difference, I put the print statement, the very last statement, uh, which is not indented with the else. That's why this will execute every time, regardless of the expression of this n1 or n2 or lf, etc. So that's a else if, I'm sorry, else if condition of a Python. If you want to introduce multiple levels of if condition, very, very simple, just like, just, just follow the same indentation level. So here is an example of multiple conditions in Python. This is if, elif, another if right here. You can see this if is indented with this print statement right here, which means this if is a, is a subset of this elif command. Very, very important too. If we put this if before, then this will be considered to be a different if altogether. So let's say execute this one to show you how that works. This is how it executes. Let me just put one more time for you to see how this looks like. There you go. This is the indented or nested if as back and forth. So you, as likewise, you can keep on nesting as many ifs as you want. Remember, indentation determines which part which is part of what not in PLSQL in PLSQL you in the equivalent one in PLSQL you don't have to indent at all uh, if if you have another if right below it it will be automatically assumed or well, that will be the if well, under that if condition not in Python you have to have this indentation to tell Python precisely what it is and what you want to do pay attention to that one next we go case statements um, uh, in uh, uh, there is a case statement in PLSQL. You might have seen that before. Let's see the PLSQL here. Sorry. This is the case statement. Case when multiple conditions you can put. Very very useful in your uh, you know uh, considering multiple types of, of expressions, right? One by one, and this one. Unfortunately, there is no case statement in Python. Uh, but it's not a big problem. Uh, the, by, you can use the, you can ex simulate the, the case condition in Python using multiple if conditions and elif conditions. So let's say if we want to use the same functionality, exactly same functionality as we have in PLSQL on this side in Python, this is how we would do. Let me open up that file. You can see that. This is how the same functionality you can do in Python. So let me put it side by side so you can see that how it is done. There you go. So it's print uh, if, elif, elif, and else. So even though it's not, uh, doesn't have the, a corresponding case statement, 
you can have the same functionality. It just uh, execute it. Very good. That's it. Let me just open that thing up so that you can see it very well. And uh, as for the, the creators of Python, they don't have any intention to introduce the case statement in the near future either because they think if condition is enough. One thing I want to stress is that you can see how compact um, the, the, the Python is in this case because uh, a lot of instructions can be put into a single line, which could be a good thing uh, or a bad thing based on thing. But once again, I want to introduce you to the concept of indentation because without that, it may introduce bugs in this case. So that's a case statement we talked about. Now let's jump on to looping. Looping is important for us. In PL SQL, you have the loop, the, the traditional loops, let's say for loop. You it starts like this for something, some kind of a number for i in starting number, dot dot ending number, loop. And you have a bunch of statements which will get executed every time there's a loop. And then you at the end of it, you put end loop. So let's say that actually that works. So get um, this is PL4. This is how the loop is. Begin for i in 1 dot dot 10 loop. Yeah, I just have put the output very simple end loop. In PL SQL is very clear, very obvious. What is the beginning of the loop? What is the end of the loop? And whatever comes in between is the loop. In Python, remember the indentation? It plays a role too, right here. So first of all, in Python, there is nothing called um, for something in a range. You have to put the word range in there. So this is how it looks like. For this is how it looks like. I in one comma eleven range one comma eleven that produces numbers from one two three four five six seven eight nine ten, not eleven. Range is in, does, it includes up to the number, but not including that number, which is important. So in this case, and then I just print it. Okay, let's just execute this program. Four, it, pretty, it prints out the same thing. Let me just put that number one thing one more time for you to see the actual Python thing. Range one comma eleven. Remember, one comma eleven means you are starting with one up to 11 but not including 11 this is yet another pro uh, thing most uh, pl sql developers don't pay attention to that in in typically in pl sql you can see right here is 1 to 10 1 dot dot 10 both are inclusive the left and the right the lower bound and the upper bound both are inclusive and in python the lower bound is inclusive it starts with 1 but the upper bound 11 is not inclusive. That means goes up to that, but not ever including that, so which is something you have to keep in mind. Don't forget that at all. So, uh, thing by Python. If I want to go backwards in this case for PL SQL, I can do backwards this way. Um, five. Sorry. You can see that backwards. I do for i in reverse 1 dot dot 10 in that it goes backward from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, etc. Uh, the word is reverse. That that word put the loops in reverse. In Python, there is nothing called reverse, but you have an optional parameter in the range that returns you the numbers in the reverse range. So let's see that it looks like here. Right here. You can see that here, instead of seeing range, I put 10 and 0, then minus 1. As you can see here, I put 0, not 1. Why? Remember that the upper bound or the right side is always going to be up to that, but not including that. So that's the reason why I want to put 0, because it's up to that, but I don't want to print 0. As a result of that, it will print only up to 1. So I have to put 0 right here. So we put this minus one at the end of it. That means it's the reverse or the is reduction as opposed to the increase. By default, it is one, which is up. So let's see how that looks. Five, 10, nine, etc. It goes backwards. Uh, once again, let me show the program to you so you can appreciate how that actually looks and how simple it is. Very simple thing. Recap range gives you 
the numbers starting number ending number but not including that number and the last one third one gives you the increment if you put a negative increment here it goes backwards there's no question of reverse thing is volume uh, what if you want to skip every other number, not just skip by one by one, like one, two, three, four, instead of that, we want to put like one, two, one, three, five, seven, etc. It's um, in PLC, well, in, in Python, it's really, really simple. Instead of doing that, we will have a slightly different one. Here, you just put, instead of minus one over here, I just put two. In that case, that's, that's how much it will skip. So let's see how that actually executes. One, three, five, seven, nine. So they are simple. So this third parameter over in the range function will give you how much to skip. If you put a negative number there, it will simply skip backwards. As simple as that. So it's very logical, isn't it? Uh, in PL SQL, actually, it's there is no direct equivalent of that. If we have to have the same functionality, like we want to skip every other number, we have to use a slightly different way of doing it. That will be something like this. We do a mod function, mod i comma two equal to one. Then you print it. That means it's modulus. So uh, if if it is an even number, it, the modulus will be zero, and if it's odd number, it will be one, and so on and so forth. So you can see that the slight difference in, in Python and, and and Python, in my opinion, is slightly superior in handling this this uh, series of numbers. Looping through arrays, arrays are of course very important because in, in, in any kind of programming language, particularly in Python, which is a more data oriented language. So let's see how we can do a, an array in Python. As you might recall from the first video, the array has, there are multiple kinds of arrays in Python, something called collection, I mean the uh, list and set, etc. And we saw that. Let's see a slightly different uh, way uh, how the Python arrays are defined. I will start Python here in this case, and I will define an array a equal to. Um, this is how the array looks like. A equal to v, etc. This is an array looks like. So I can do print. Sorry. They say this is how it actually prints a b or i can just put a it will show the same thing as well this is how an array looks like let's see an actual array and how we can go through one by one in the array so to do that let me open up the program i have one program right here and that way that is this i have a, a variable called a Mary had a little lamb. Each lamb, word is actually one part of the one uh, element of the array. So here, for i in range length of a length of a determines what is how many total number of arrays there are in this in this a, a variable called a, which is very very important length. And because I put range and the number of the length of this thing, it will give me how many elements there are in this. Then I reference each element like a within square brackets i. i is then becomes my indicator or index to the specific elements in the array. Let's see how that works. So in this case, if it is uh, in, the, in, in this particular case, let's just open or, or run this one. By six, very simple thing. Let me open that file one more time so you can see the how it looks like. So A is got this, and I am printing one by one. Mary had a little lamb. In this case, I am printing the index as well as the value of that index. So index is first one is zero. Remember from our first video in 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 Python, unlike in PL SQL, the index starts with zero, not one. So zero is Mary, one at that, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, the length of that shows me I have to go through. Uh, it, it goes through all of them and uh, but the but the length column I can see here it says one two three four five etc um, uh, total let me start with another one and uh, I will say this this is my variable 
So if I do length of A, it's 5. If I do range of 5, it gives me 0 to 5. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I do A, print A, I, it starts with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The fifth one doesn't exist and Python doesn't complain about it. It simply skips it because it doesn't exist. So it starts with 0, 1, 2, 3. So technically, I shouldn't have put here A, I, 1. I should have put here, I'm sorry, not I in range. I should have put here range length A minus 1 because that's the um, that's the um, starting up uh, that's that's the that I can go up only up to that not more than that so that's the basic way you can just iterate through the array but what's actually more important is that not this but more other things about array for example uh, looping in a while condition you don't loop forever you loop with a certain condition in mind so in this looping with a while condition let's see that actually looks like This is a PLC equal program. I have a number, I, variable called I, with 0. While I is less than 11, I increment the value and I display the value. That's why I, see I print it from 0 to 10. If I write the exact same program in Python, it will be very, very simple. Let me see that. Exit. Sorry. I keep forgetting that you have to put a square and parenthesis after exit. Let me clear it. This is how the while looks like. First one, as you can see here, i equal to 0. This defines, uh, it declares a variable called i and assigns the number 0 to that value. While less than i11, print, and then i plus 1. Let's run this, see what happens. P7, I see the same value, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10. So in terms of uh, syntax, Python is very similar to Pell SQL. You can see that here. Nothing bad at all. Very, very simple thing to do. But also keep in mind this all important colon at the end of while. That's not there in, uh, in, in the no loop keyword, as you can see here in uh, Pell SQL. Very important. So, how does it know Python know this is a loop? Well, while is a loop. How does it know what to execute inside the loop? Again, indentation plays a role. This indentation here, print i equal to 1, that's one tells you what is part of the while clause and what is not. So if I have a slightly modified program, let me just see the same same program I modified. And I say print, this is inside the loop. Do you think it's correct? It's not correct. Why? Because if I want to be inside the loop, then it must be indented properly here. It is not indented if I do it this way and I execute it. Let's see what happens. Look at this. This will execute. So this is not part of the loop. It's actually outside, outside the loop. If it was inside the loop, it would have executed every time. So in case I want to, I want it part of my inside the loop, then I indent it. Then I put something else, print, this is the last line. Something similar to that one. And I save it. And I run it. There you go. So now, because, let me just show, show that for you so you can see. Because this print statement, this is inside the loop, this statement, is, inside, is indented with the while clause. So this is part of the loop. Unlike in PL SQL, end loop defines what's uh, the end of the con uh, expressions inside the loop in python indentation determines what the things are very very important for you to keep uh, keep track of and keep that in mind once again indentations play play a big role in uh, the thing uh, in uh, python okay next one uh, sometimes you need to break away from the loop because in pl sql there are two ways to break it one you can say exit when certain condition is satisfied or second one is that if some condition is satisfied then exit so let's see both how they work um, this is how the one of them looks like 
so while condition loop exit when mod equal to 5 in this case we don't want to go we don't want the while to continue and to in the entire thing we just want to exit certain condition is bad in this case we have to want to find out if this uh, one of the counters is the uh, multiply is a, is a um, uh, multiple of 5 that's why we put it here and we put line here and we put, put 5 and exit when if, if we hit a multiplier of 5 then we exit that's how it works and uh, exit when another variation of the same thing is you don't have to have exit when but if you say if this then exit the idea is that when you have an exit it exits the loop entirely so it comes to the comes to whatever comes after end of the loop the same one in Python is slightly different actually is much more elegant in my opinion is this This is how it looks like. Let me open up this thing in Notepad so you can see that a slightly better way. This is how it looks like in Python. Exact same statement. Again, while is less than one i equal to eleven. Uh, print i equal to i plus one. I percent is five. Remember from our first video, percent is the same thing as the modulus uh, as in PL SQL equal to zero. Um, there is no no equivalent of exit when as we saw it in PL SQL right here. This, this is the how you have to do it print break and just to make sure that you understand it I put here print right right here now keep in mind this is the print indented not with this break here it's indented away from it that means this will not be part of the if condition instead it will be part of the while loop and this print statement right here it's not indented at all. It's actually indented to the very first. So this should be executed every time the program runs. Let's see how that actually works. There you go. So this is um, i equal to one, um, y equal to two, y equal to three, etc. And but this statement keeps coming all the time. This is inside the loop, but after the break. So why is that? Look at the statement right here after the break but wait a minute when i say break i want to break i want to get out of the loop and come to this uh, uh, out of the break here yet it keeps on breaking it so at this point is it at four when the break happened right here this statement wasn't executed right here so then how come this statement got executed when the break condition wasn't there because this is indented with the if here. If we want this statement to happen when there is a break condition happens, then we have to indent it appropriately. Let's see how we do this. If we indent it right here, and this will should come to what should happen, what we intend could happen. Wait a second, we didn't see that. We didn't see the statement this is inside the loop but after the break why is that well answer the question let's see so this statement when if i percent is 5 equal to 0 that means our condition is met then we this state this statements get executed but the first one is print which we got condition satisfied breaking good the next one is break it did break the third one print will never execute because at this point the program has given the control back outside the loop outside this if the loop condition here that's the reason why it will never execute it so you have to be very super careful in putting it because without that you might introduce some bugs in the program as well statement good thing um, so this is quite important that this is uh, the exit happens after um, after the statement we can the statement at the end after the loop ends we can do something similar to that in PL SQL by using this. Uh, you can see if this is it, this is inside the loop and outside uh, the, the um, uh, inside the loop, but after the exit condition here, if we execute it, you can see this statement also doesn't execute. So this is how. Why wasn't it? Because in, in the, then why was the same line in Python was executed? It's very simple. In Python, we had this. 
after the exit call break here. Uh, in this case, right after in exit call is exited. In Python, it didn't exist because at this point, this is we put this indentation afterwards, and this, that's the reason why this if condition did not include this print statement as a part of its. That's the reason why it's uh, it executed that regardless of this. So indentation plays a big role, as you can see here. Uh, very very important. Keep that in mind. Um, so um, that's how the indentation plays a role. You can see that over here. Now this break statement is not just for while. It's also for uh, even uh, for loops. So here is an example of for loop in PL SQL. For i one to ten, if some condition, then exit. In Python, you can have the exact same thing as well. Very similar to that. For range, remember that, and then if, then break. We can do the same thing. We can execute it just to see how that looks. But I think you got the hint. The for loop as well. Now, for everything. There is a very interesting thing in Python, which is no equivalent of in PL SQL. It's called else for for loop. So you might be wondering, what is else for for loop? It's very difficult to explain that in the concept, but it's very easy to show that in an example. So let's see an actual Python example. So let me open up this in a notepad so you can see it slightly better. This is how it looks like. So I have uh, input number, enter a number here for I in range 1 to 11 um, that's gives like a same same thing as 1 dot dot 10 remember anything when I assume uh, input that's like an input of my user but that input is given as a string I want to convert that to int to make sure that an integer so I percent is my number equal to 0 then it's a multiple found for this number here is a break remember this break comes right after this and print multiple is not found so in this case no multiple found this is uh, this is very interesting else there is no if condition this if is different remember this if if i had to put a else for this particular if i would have put the if else right here but that's not what i did i put the else at the same level as the for loop so what does it do let's see what it does don't save it python 10 enter a number let's say put 3 or something yep it found multiple per 3 let me put a number number here say 5 found a multiple for 5 then let me put 13 here something no multiple found for 13. Now let's see what happens here. Let's just see. Uh, you can see the specific type to show that. Let's see very clearly. What happens is that if I enter a number and a multiple is found, it breaks. When it breaks, that's it. it it's end of it. But what if I don't find anything? In this second example, I, by the, the third time executed, I, I entered the number 13, and 13 will never satisfy the condition. That's why this entire for loop executed without meeting that condition. In that case, it will go to else. Let me repeat it. The entire, the if the loop exits successfully, in this case, I have a success here. I uh, Some condition was satisfied, and I put a break, like it happened in here and here and sorry here in that case it's it print the number and got out in that case this else condition is not executed if the loop completes in the second case the 13th case the loop completed because i just went from 1 to 11 i didn't even go until 13 in that case the loop this if condition was not satisfied ever in that case it goes to else condition so this is something pretty powerful. If you want to uh, print something where the loop executed without an, a, some condition satisfied, 
in that case the else condition is uh, executed if the loop meets some condition inside and then it has a break that means it's a user defined break away from the loop the else clause is not executed so it's a really really uh, very sometimes useful thing at, for, for uh, python um, this is a pseudo code for else in the loops it might help through, might through go through the loop if the loop completes and exits normally then execute the else block but if the loop breaks that means it's executed and, and the break condition is made then do not execute the else block which is pretty useful in 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 many cases you might argue if there is no equivalent of that in pl sql but you can write something in programmatically in pl sql right say like for example this one multiple fine it's a similar construct so i don't think i have it here uh, probably will not find it here is um, so you can probably find it and in, in, in pl sql in a slightly different way and that will be do i have it here somewhere uh here 10a 9a no i don't have it here uh, b okay um so i'll probably so the, the, the slightly in pl sql you can do the slightly different way this way you can do that because you have to explicitly check for it exit at the end of it you say no multiple found and uh, um, this PL, this Python is not just this else uh, in for loop is not just only for for loop. You can also use it same thing for or a while loop as well. Let's see how the while loop looks like. This is how a while loop looks like. Same same concept applies. If the while loop uh, goes through it, if the while loop completes without entering a break condition, the else is uh, uh, printed. If it encounter something and then a break break comes in then this else is not printed so you can do that as well let's just see how that works enter a number it's a 13 no multiple found very simple thing so this is a very useful tool of a python and uh, sometimes it might come very handy continue is something that's very useful in PL SQL program it was introduced most recently in, in PL SQL and very useful sometimes the continue is helpful when you just want to continue the rest of the loop without actually breaking away from it here's an example this is a continue example in this case I want to loop through 1 to 10 and if uh, a mod this condition is satisfied more here I want to print something multiple found then I don't want to break I want to continue to the next one or jump over to the next to the loop I don't want to uh, execute the rest of the statement inside the block but if it is not found I want to execute the things rest of the block how do we do it very simple thing this is a continue statement that means continue to the end of the loop and then go back to the loop again break will simply break away from the loop I don't want that in uh, Python the equivalent statement is also called continue so this is how it looks like continue print we are continuing and if we execute it it will be very similar okay. you can see that it can be very similar so continue is something that you jump to the end of the loop and start the loop again from the next one um, break is something you can break away from the loop um, in case continue statement uh, because all the statements were there there is one little variation of the continue as well what if you want to the indentation play with the initial a little bit more in the earlier case in the first one you can see that this print statement is indented with this if as a result of that this was not part of this if statement this is outside of it what if you make this part also this print also outside of the print statement if we execute it say 3 you can see this statement print we are continuing 
we are continuing gets executed all the time. So continue is simply jump to the end of the the statement and, and start the queue of loop as if nothing happened. And if you don't have a continue here, it will not jump to the end of the loop. It will continue as if nothing had happened and life will continue from this point onwards. Let's make a null pass. Sometimes in a PLSQL program, you have to put some line, but that line should not do anything. This is actually helpful if I look at a program. Look at this one, this program. This is something we have seen before. DBMS output, port line, multiple found. Let's say to sometime in the future, we decide that uh, no multi this line, no multiples found, no multiples found. This is annoying. You don't want to have that at all. So we went to simply comment it out. And save it and run it it will give a syntax error why because after the else statement there's nothing this is a comment only and there's an end if we can't have that we have to have some statement inside that so what statement can you have so this is where the problem comes in well we don't have to in PL SQL the statement we can put here is simply null that means this is a null statement and run it. That's fine. So similarly, in PLC, I mean in Python, the equivalent is called pass. So let's see how the pass is. Three. This is how. It, remember in Python, the comments are the hash sign. So has print no multiples found, and I commented it out. So I but I need to have some kind of a statement right after this, otherwise the else will fail, and I have the pass for that. So I just put here 13 and enter a number 3 and that's it in the pass. So remember, uh, continue MC null is the same thing as pass. So that's it. That's the thing about logics and conditions, logic and all thing. And uh, so let's just go through a few things, a quick summary of what we went through. Basic if condition in PL SQL, if some condition, then some statements and end if that shows you the, the if block. In case of Python, there is no end if. So the only way Python understands the list of statements inside the if block is by indentation. Anything that is indented in the proper level, that becomes one single block. Anything that is not indented at the level becomes outside the block. That is very important. And there is a colon at the end of the if, the conditional statement, which is very important, which is the equivalent of, I would say, then in PL SQL. And uh, so, in, uh, this indentation is not just for if, if for everything, while, for, etc. So, very, pay very important attention to indentation and the colon. This to be becomes building blocks of Python. And um, else, if you have an else statement, and uh, else if, etc. In case of a py in Python, is a leaf, which is a part of else. And else is else, but else if is a leaf statements if condition. And um, but again, indentation plays a huge role in this case as well. In case of for loop, PL SQL is for i in uh, some start uh, number to dot dot end number loop, and at the end you have end loop. In Python, you have range start comma end, and if you have another third parameter over there, which will skip that many, you can put a negative number there so that it goes backwards as well, and uh, then a bunch of statements. Once again that range or whatever expression you have after the for, you have a colon at the end of it, and then you have a list of statements, and there is no end loop, because the only way for Python to know is end of the looping condition is because you have stopped using the indentation. This statement, statement not inside the while loop, is not indented with the rest of the statements. That's what will indicate this is outside the loop. Very, very important to understand that as well. If you want to skip the counters in PL SQL, you do mod i2 equal to zero, do something, etc. Um, in Python, you simply put at the end this whatever amount you have to skip. In PL SQL, reverse stat dot and that what is used for reversing the, the counters. In case of uh, Python, simply put minus one. That's then enough. While loop, a while some condition loop again end loop. In this case, all important colon in Python, and 
indentation that shows you what's inside this so this uh, indentation uh, i couldn't stress enough how important it is to keep track of otherwise you will introduce bugs because these things will not be executed or will be executed without what you really intended to breaking away from the loop you this usually do exit when some condition or if some condition then exit inside uh, in in python is inside a loop if some condition use the word break that's it but again indentation is important else for for loop there is no plc equal equivalent at all in uh, python else for for loop is executed if the loop here completes without entering any kind of conditions inside um, so successfully completes uh, else condition if it encounters something here and it breaks then else is not uh, completed the case statements uh, when some in, in PL SQL the case statement is very useful when you have multiple conditions to apply so it will go through each one of them and whatever the comes first will execute but in since there is no equivalent in uh, Python you have to use uh, if elif uh, else to just to have the similar functionality loop controls you continue inside a loop using continue in PL SQL the word is also continue the only difference is remember Python is a case sensitive language this is a lower case and uh, PL SQL you have to put a legally syntactically correct um, line all the time between multiple control statements like if and end if etc and if you don't have any anything to put there simply put the word null and the equivalent in python is pass uh, no semicolon required or non, no semicolon accepted over there in python so since you have gone through a few things let's understand your uh, let's make sure that you understand every uh, the concepts correctly so i have a few questions uh, for you you'll have see the questions and then you'll be able to get the answer right here as well first question what will be the output of the following python code i'll pause a little bit here i will ask you to pause uh, in the screen here before you see the answer okay did you pause please pause the screen all right if you pause here is the answer it will be n1 is not a multiple of 5 well, that's surprising n1 is 25 here I put n1 percent 5 should be uh, so it's a multiple of 5 so how come the problem is in Python if you remember from the first uh, series first video the booleans are treated as 0 and 1 zero, anything 0 is false anything non 0 is true in this case I'm not making it equal to or I'm not comparing with 0 I'm simply saying if n1 percent 5 this will return 0 because 25 percent 5 equal to 0 which will be interpreted as false that's why Python will not execute this it will execute the else which is print so be pay attention to this kind of little things very important in Python which will um, may introduce box this is exactly what we intended to uh, reverse of what we intended to question number two again please pause at this point and in the read the question and answer will be shown after you unpause okay let's see we we see the answer right now in this case clearly what I'm doing is the output of the following code I have a variable n1 I learned my lesson I'm not going to just come simply say if n1 percent 5 because I know that's going to be boolean in this case I'm comparing specifically to 0 I'm in the right place and all that I'm in the wrong place and I'm not a multiple of 5 very simple thing so what happens then it will show you I am at the right place and I'm not a multiple of 5 well that makes no sense I'm printing 2 I'm printing I'm a multiple of 5 right after that I'm also printing I'm not a multiple of 5 why the answer lies in indentation see here this print statement I actually intended this print statement to be part of the else block didn't I because that's what should say I'm not a multiple of 5 unfortunately either my mistakenly or deliberately I put this without indentation 
So Python will interpret it as outside the else if else block entirely. That's why the print statement will execute regardless of the, of the value of this expression. That's the reason why it will print both of them. Once again, to show the value of indentation in Python. Third question. So please pause at this point and read the question and the answer will be shown after you unpause. Okay, you want to display all the even numbers between 30 and 20 in the reverse order, you know, 30, 28, 26, etc., up to 20. So you wrote the following code. You know that the third parameter in the range is right here, minus 2, right? Minus 2, and that's what printed. What do you think the output will be? If you have a Python script right there, you can actually print it yourself and see what the difference is. All right. Pause your screen and think of the answer. When you're done, unpause. Here is the answer. It doesn't produce the result as you expected. Instead of producing 30, 28, 26, etc., it produced 30, 20, minus 2. Why? Because remember, you didn't put range here. When you put this, Python interpreted this as an array, 30, 20, and minus 2, three elements and three other values. So when you say print i, it simply printed each one of them. That's it. If you wanted to produce the even numbers from 30 backwards all the way up to 20 and minus 2, you should have used range 30, 20, minus 2, not simply parenthesis 30, 20, minus 2. So even though syntactically, isn't correct it will not give a syntax error it will execute fine it will not give you the same result as you intended so pay attention to that one question four you want to print all even numbers between 20 and 30 both numbers inclusive so you write the following for i in range 20 comma 30 comma 2 now you are careful about range right so you do I use the word range you do this Will it produce the desired result? Again, pause your screen and think of the answer. And we're ready, unpause it. Okay? Here is the answer. It gives me 20, 22, 24, 26, and 28. It does not give me 30. Remember, you wanted 30 as well. Why not? The range function, the lower bound is 20. It will start at that. The upper bound is 30. The range function will not go up to that. A big difference from PL SQL. I don't know in the intention of that one is, but that's some, definitely something you have to pay attention to. Question 5. Last question in this uh, video. You want to display all the numbers between 5 and 10, so you wrote the following program. n equal to 5, while n is less than 11. You remember that n is less than 11. That means it goes up to 10. 11 will not be satisfied. So print n1 equal to this, then n1 is n plus 1. Very simple thing. It's a while loop. You increment n112. So will the program produce the output as the following? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Pause your screen and think of the answer. When you are ready, we'll give you the answer. Okay. Since you, did you get the answer correctly? The answer is, it will not produce a result. Why not? Look at this thing here. Your n1 equal to n1 plus 1, incrementing this n1 value, is it indented with the print here? It's not. So what will happen is that n1 will never be incremented as a part of the while loop. This while loop, n1 is less than 11, n1 is 5. So n1 is less than 11 all the time. This condition will be satisfied. This while loop will continue forever. It's a vicious loop. It will never end. This statement, n1 equal to n1 plus 1, will never ever come. So this is not what you wanted it to do. So that's it. That's the end of our, uh, our video here. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, we'll talk about collections. And that's a very important part of Python. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.